there are more than two million people in the United States incarcerated in a correctional facility, a jail, or a prison. Fourteen thousand of those people are serving time or waiting trial within the Cleveland Diocese. The numbers are shocking. Since 1980, the number of women incarcerated in our country has increased by 600 percent, due largely to much tougher drug laws. Seventy percent of female inmates are nonviolent offenders, and the same percentage have left behind children, children left to the care of a grandparent or placed in foster care. One and a half million children in our country have a parent in prison. Nearly 14,000 people are incarcerated in the prisons and jails found within the northeast part of Ohio. On average, 25% of those incarcerated are members of our Catholic community. In this case, that would mean 3,500 people, many of whom are registered parishioners in our diocese. This group, if considered as a single unit, would comprise a medium-sized parish. Those close to this community often use the term invisible parish, excluded from job, from community, from family, from friends, and at times from the faith community. Jesus calls us to reach out to this invisible parish and to their families. This call is at the heart of our diocesan ministry to the incarcerated. Let's listen to the stories and reflections of those who have responded to that call, the call of Christ, the call of those who are in prison, the call of our bishop and our faith community. I'm here uh, this morning to say Mass uh, for the inmates at the Cuyahoga County uh, Jail because I'm deeply concerned about them as I think Jesus is concerned about them. We have people here who have made some mistakes, bad mistakes in their life. But we need to remember that that's why Jesus came into the world, because all of us have made mistakes, and he cares about all of us. So if you're considering what to do with your life, I would urge you to consider the possibility of doing some prison ministry. These are people who need your help, who need to reform their lives and be given another chance to be redeemed. That's what Jesus did, and I think that's what he wants us to do. I really believe that God wanted me to do this and I had to follow my heart and and give it a try. I talked it over with my husband and I said, Mike, you're not going to believe this, but I really believe that I'm supposed to <laughs> go to the jail. And he said, well, give it a try. How can I read sacred scripture and come across the corporal work of mercy? What Christ said when I was in prison, you visited me. How can I not respond? Ministry um, really has changed my life, uh, and I owe it all really to the women that I interact with um, every week here. Um, they bring a great deal of spirituality um, to our service, um, and um, I think recognizing their spiritual lives is so important um, as they continue to recover. I think personally from my own experience for someone to be able to be a good prison minister you really need to be a person who can be kind and understanding not judgmental not condemning anyone not trying to figure out why they're here once I'm sitting with the inmate there really is there's nothing I can't talk to her about I'm allowed to hold her hands I'm allowed to hug her um, you know I, I pray with them and pray over them None of us that go, go because we want to be rewarded. We're not going because we want to get anything out of it, have like our name in the paper or anything, but um, the rewards are inside. And just the fact that we're doing what we're being called to do, not only by the Pope, but by God. So it's, it's a wonderful thing. I'm just overwhelmed at the gratitude um, and they're just saying thank you to us practically every week. Um, they thank us for being there. I'm so humbled by their prayer, 
And as a matter of fact, the very first inmate I met, she was very, very ill. She is, she's now terminally ill. And her prayer was so much from her heart. And she had Jesus. I didn't need to come here and give her Jesus. She gave him, him to me. All we can do is be there for them, to listen to them, and reaffirm their self-worth, their dignity. You can't look at these women without your heart going out to them and thinking of them as whether they're a drug addict or whether they're in for murder, um, no matter what they're in for, it just it doesn't matter. It just disappears because they're here, they need help. You listen to what they have to say, not passing judgment, not trying to give them legal answers because we're not lawyers, but just many times being a spiritual friend to them and helping them through a very difficult time in their life. We do look at them as, as a mother, um, as a daughter. Um, that's very important, perhaps as a grandmother um, who might have had custody of their children and, and of, of their grandchildren has come to prison. So it's real important to, um, to look at them in that light and certainly not to judge them um, by the crime they have committed. So I think it's just being able to reach out and many times help people who are in a hopeless situation to offer a little bit of hope. I wish more people would give it a try, not be so afraid, get past the prisoner stereotype that they see on the news and just come in and see that these are just all really people. A lot of them have had a lot of damage done to them and just by going in and saying one nice thing to them can make all the difference in the world. The need for more jail ministry volunteers is not diminishing. It is in fact growing every day. Please help us in our effort to answer the call to minister to those incarcerated. inmates and they all are very needy and those needs can be met by volunteers coming in to help us uh, manage inmates and help them get through the period of incarceration with, with the, the least amount of problems. We value their contribution to our facility in more ways than I can ever describe.